A mother, thankful for the education that she got, moves back here to Indiana so that her daughter could go to the same school that she did. She says the life she has now probably wouldn't have been possible without the skills that she learned at Indiana School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Our Kelsey Anderson joining us live this morning with her story. Kelsey, good morning. Good morning, Lauren. So for people who are blind or visually impaired, doing everyday tasks like getting on the computer, reading a book, or even a menu at a restaurant, riding the bus can be really difficult or impossible, but one mother says that a local school can make that possible. Well, it definitely got me prepared to go off to college. Um, I went to college. I now work for the IRS. Joyce Wade is talking about the Indiana School for the Blind and Visually Impaired. It gave me social skills and it gave me the academics that I needed to be prepared to go out and be a productive part of society. Um, it gave me the confidence um, to do things that like I say, you normally just wouldn't do. Wade is considered legally blind and is a graduate of ISBVI. She tells me she lived in St. Louis for a while, but when her daughter Michaela, who is also legally blind, was in middle school, she decided to move back to Indiana. In my opinion, it's one of the best blind schools in the country, so I didn't want to come back here and let her have the same opportunities that I had. Wade says it's not just the academic education that brought her back, but also the life skills that the school teaches. And they get exposed to some of the things that they may not be able to be exposed to at public school, like mobility. Um, the mobility here, what they do is teach the kids to navigate the bus systems and to navigate different, like going into restaurants and being able to navigate the menus. It's valuable for students to be able to be as independent as they possibly can. Jim Durst is the superintendent and ISBVI. And individuals who don't work with children who are blind or have low vision tend to focus on the things children can't do because of the blindness or the low vision. We really try to emphasize that your child, your student, can pretty much do anything a sighted child can do if given the right opportunities, if provided with the right accommodations. This month is Blindness Awareness Month, and Durst wants you to know that there are plenty of opportunities and support for you in this community, for you or your child, um, and they are all over Indianapolis. We'll have them listed for you over on the RTV6 News app. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6.